Hello, I'm making these videos for the city engineer's office and uh, for other offices of the city of Baguio to understand how to work with OpenStreetMap. And uh, I noticed the majority of the offices they work with QGIS. It's um, a great application to visualize data. Um, it already has some standard um, embedded features for OpenStreetMap. One of them is to simply double click on it. And um, what it does is what it says it does. This is an XYZ tile. Uh, this is layer zoom level 1, I believe. Uh, this is the 2, 3, and you can zoom in more and more. Uh, there's in total 20 layers, 20 or 21. I'm not sure I never counted them, but uh, as you see, the more I zoom in, I get the next layer. And I zoom in more, I get more layers. Now the concept, you should understand, it's like a layer, a layer, a layer, a layer. Now look at one layer only, we flip it like that. What it is, what you actually see at the screen, you have one image, a square image, then the next one, and it's stitched to it, and then the next one, it's stitched to it, and the next one, it's stitched to it. So what you're looking at is map data. It's actually a bunch of images stitched together. Every layer, the more you zoom in, you see a different layer, has different information what it shows you. So while you are zoomed out a lot, it doesn't make any sense to show you a house because a house will be less than a pixel. But as you zoom in, at some point, houses, they would become 100 pixels, 200 pixels. The more you zoom in, eventually it would become 1000 or 2000 pixels. At some point, the renderer who creates these images, which are called tiles, which are stitched together, decides for you if it's worth it to be shown or not. Now the problem is this is predetermined by whoever set up the tile server and whoever renders the tiles. You can do that also at home or in the office. You can render your own tiles. There's software for that. Uh, beautiful software is Maperative, for example, but there's a lot of uh, uh, competition there. It's all open source, or most is open source. And um, uh, it's very beautiful if you do that yourself, but it's a lot of work. Uh, so it's not recommendable for the average user uh, while at the same time it costs a lot of time um, but if you don't want to do that and you want to rely on someone else to do the rendering for you that's great but you are restricted then to what they determine what you should see on every level in every layer so if you zoom in and they determine you don't need to see that and you say but I want to see that well you're out of luck, you cannot change it because it's just an image. It's not actually the data from OpenStreetMap. It's just the visualization of what someone determines for you, what you should see. Um, so I always say it's nice, it's a nice map to look at, but it's not like you can do anything with it really. And uh, that is the limitation of this. So if you now want to see the barangay boundaries, or you want to see the Pura boundaries, um, the, the tile server host of OpenStreetMap and whoever generates these tiles decided you do not want to see that. Even if you do, they decided for you, you don't need to see that. What they did decide, however, is uh, the city boundary here. So the city boundary is being rendered. You can go around the screen and you can actually see the city boundary. Um, but that's about it. That's their decision and it's not like you can change that. The data is there, in the database it's there, but it's just not visualized for you. And um, some more on administrative levels I'm going to show you. So this is the uh, Wiki Wikipedia about uh, OpenStreetMap. It's very thorough, there's a lot of information there. Uh, this is the entry on admin levels. And uh, it also has country-specific levels, which are interested, of course, if you go there for the Philippines. This is what uh, what we are using. And um, um, as you can see here, the Philippines, it has administrative level three for the regions, four for the provinces, five. Um, I don't actually know if we are using that. I haven't seen them. Um, 
sexes for the municipalities and cities, so for Baguio, uh, the Baguio city boundary has an administrative level 6. Uh, 7, 8, 9, I'm not sure if we are using them, uh, like it says here, if any, or here it says uh, if any. I'm not aware of any, but maybe there are some areas in the Philippines where that actually exists. Not in Baguio, however. In Baguio, we use barangays and uh, puroxitios. And here you have to understand what does proposed mean. Proposed means that it's under uh, discussion right now. It's not being used. So at the moment, the barangay level, as you can see on the way, all the way on the right here, that's administrative level 10. That's how we map currently the barangays in the Philippines. And the city of Purox, that's not even here in the list I see right now, but that's administrative level 11. And uh, the proposal is to switch the CTOs and Purox to administrative level 9 and the barangays to level 8. But right now it's level 10 and 11 and we've got to live with how it is right now. And 10 and 11 has been determined by the people who host the OpenStreetMap tiles and the people who do the rendering uh, to not visualize that. Like I said, you, there are applications like Mapperative where you can actually manually select what you want to be visualized or not, and there you can enable or disable that. Uh, but right now in OpenStreetMap, on the general uh, tile host, it's not being rendered. So when you look at the map, you see the city boundary, but you don't see any other administrative boundaries. And um, at this point, let me show you the data from the assessor office. Layers, assessor. Uh, this is the existing barangay boundaries. Let's move that down here, add as a layer. So here you see in this uh, very green, you can change these colors, but in this very green um, polygons, you can see the barangay boundaries, this is Irisan, and you can see the city boundary. Now, if you zoom in very, very closely, you can actually see it's a 100% match. And um, so basically you wouldn't need the assessor data, you could just use the OpenStreetMap data if you could visualize that, which you cannot do with the tile server. So at this point, let's disable this, the tile server, and I'm going to show you another way to work with OpenStreetMap, and this is actually the interesting part. So skip, skip the tile server, it's very limited. It's a nice um, overlay or underlay, but it's not like it's practical to work with. You can go here to plugins, and in the plugins you can search for something called Quick OSM. I already installed it, but I'm going to tell you now to install it, and uh, close the video now while you're installing that. Once you've done the installation, you can go here on Vector and you see a new entry, it's called Quick OSM. Quick OSM can hook into JOSM. Now, city officials won't actually need that because this is if you want to alter information on OpenStreetMap, and before you do that, you should know what you're doing. Um, so skip this for a moment. We're just interested in working with the data, not actually adding or editing or altering data or removing data. Um, click on Quick OSM and what it does here, you have some preset and parameters, but uh, most interestingly and most complicated would be this query, this is the direct overpass query. It's kind of tricky to do this, yeah, you really have to study the overpass API to know how to do this, but the quick query is very helpful. And for example, we are only interested in Baguio, so we type in Baguio, that's really all we want to know. And then the barangays, if you forgot, you can check that here in the OpenStreetMap wiki, 
that's administrative level 10. So you can enter that here, the admin level, and then you say that's 10, and then you say run the query for buggy. Um, depending on the speed of your internet, this can take a while. At night, this is blazing fast. Um, it's done, closed. I can zoom out. Now you see we have here the uh, areas, they are yellow. You can disable them. Uh, then we have all the nodes which uh, form the polygons. You can also filter out the nodes. And now you have just the lines. The lines here represent the Baguio City boundary and the barangay boundary. So this is then Irizan, uh, Prince of Pilot, and uh, all the other barangays. Uh, you can enable OpenStreetMap again, and then you see how nicely these uh, barangay boundaries, how nicely they are now layered over the OpenStreetMap data. It's basically the same data, except now it's visualized. Um, let's double click here and change the color, but I don't like the color. I'm generally not happy with uh, pastel colors as overlay on a map. So now it's dark red, that's better visual, visible. Uh, so this is then the barangays. Uh, what's interesting here is, let's disable the street map. If we enable now the, the um, existing barangay boundaries known to the assessor office, you see that it's really a one-on-one -on -one match. I did a, took a great deal uh, being very precise importing this data. Um, as you can see, there are some issues somewhere, like here, the assessor office has suddenly here a polygon stretching into another barangay, and um, there's also some other issues. Mm. Where did I see it? I just saw it. Oh, here's another one. Here you can see also that it's stretching into a barangay, the boundary. So th these are errors in the data of the assessor office. For OpenStreetMap, I actually fixed those issues. Um, I'm very precise. People who know me, they know I'm very precise. This one here is an area which I surveyed myself personally. So the green one here shows you the official boundary, which I also imported, as you can see, into OpenStreetMap, except for a single fact. When I was uh, walking in this area, I actually noticed that uh, the house number plates they actually showed the barangay of the neighboring barangay and not the barangay which they are supposedly belong to according to the data I got from the city assessor's office. Um, so on OpenStreetMap we actually show physical reality and one reality is the data the city has so we do that. The other reality is when we do field surveying and notice, hey, something here is done differently as what, they, as what the official data is, we map that. So it's very easy for the city then to recognize, hey, we should send someone there and discuss with these barangays, what is that? Uh, do these barangays between each other, the two of them, did they decide something else and didn't inform the city about it? Um, that's politics at OpenStreetMap. We don't do politics. We just show the facts how it is. It is a fact. Those houses there claim they belong to the other barangay, as what the city assessor office says. What you do with that? That's your decision. Uh, at OpenStreetMap, we don't go over that. We just stick to the physical reality on the ground, and we try to find errors in data. We try to optimize the data. Yeah, but overall, as you can see, the data is pretty much uh, consistent. And at this point, I'm going to show the next step. The next step would be 
one administrative level down. So we want again in Baguio, and we want now the next admin level, that would be 11, that is for CTOs and products. And then we do again run query. Yeah, now we now we got those as well. So as you can see here, I started to add Purox to some barangay. So this barangay of Irizan, I added all the Purox. Um, this is mostly from my own personal surveying while walking around. I make notes which house claims to be Purox 1, Purox 2, Purox 3. Based on that, I then draw the lines, the polygons. Um, if, if this house claims it's one, if that house claims it's two, then I know the boundary is between them. That may not be 100% accurate, but it's as accurate as can be because no one shared data with me on the poor boundaries. Uh, I asked the, the barangay of Irisan, they said they don't have that data either. They don't know it's a decision made between the poor where the boundary is, so no one really knows. And um, I tried to do it as accurate as possible with that given fact. Um, so Irizan I done completely, Skalbaria I did completely. And uh, I'm now working here on city camp. Or is this city camp? Wait. No, this is uh, city camp proper. So this is now Purg 1, here comes Purg 3, then you got two, then you got three and four. Um, yeah, I started doing this, but this is not yet done. And as you can see, the, the overlay is still a bit mismatched. Um, I will work on that the coming week. Uh, but that will be the next barangay I'm going to complete. And then comes uh, Sun Rock Village. That's then the next barangay I'm going to do the poor. Um, but anyway, as you can see, you can disable here the city assessor office data now, and you can disable the area data. And you can also disable the nodes, and then you got these beautiful lines. The red is the barangays, and the black is the borox. We can actually uh, change the arrangement. So now the red which is a barangay, is now over the Purox because RAD has a higher administrative level. And um, yeah, so this is basically how you can filter out these administrative levels from the OpenStreetMap database. And then you don't need local data anymore. Uh, the beautiful system of this is if the city assessor office changes some boundaries they don't have to distribute this with other offices anymore other offices don't risk if they don't know about updates that they don't that they actually have false information that is outdated they don't need to check every time again and again oh did, did some boundary change or did other data change no you don't have to do that the person who changes it, the person who goes over this data, in this case that's the assessor office, they can do this directly on OpenStreetMap. The moment they do that, automatically every single office who uses the data gets the update. It's instantly. It's the moment the assessor office updates. At the same moment if I do the query, I get the updated data. So this is really convenient and it's accurate. And um, working like this, you get also the support of the people, of course, because everything you see here, all of that on this database, currently not a single city official worked on it. This is done by us, the volunteers. Um, so this is the beautiful thing of OpenStreetMap. The city can use its own strength and its own offices and its own employees while collaborating with the volunteers. And th then we have people, uh, companies like Grab, Facebook, etc., who support this. They are very supportive. They also uh, make uh, software for us, which we use for mapping. They add data themselves. 
and uh, it's a huge collaboration really and that is also the reason why it's already much more better than Google because of this collaboration uh, now I hear I heard the, the topics about uh, how can the city uh, guarantee the data integrity um, I'm going to stop this video and make another video about that.